Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be going over the 2023 English edition of the Hobonichi Cousin. So I have it right here. They did switch up the um, packaging for 2023. It used to be like the cellophane um, wrapper and now it's basically uh, pla uh, paper. It feels like paper. So the Cousin has one page per day. It is an A5 size and it is a January start. So this will go from January to December of 2023. The original Hobonichi also has the option for the Avec, which is the two book system. So that goes from January to June and then July to December. So before we get started, um, I just wanna address um, my hands. I'm a teacher and I was pre prepping a lesson for tomorrow and I spilled paint on my hand. So um, that's what the pink splotches are. So. Just try to ignore it. Um, so I'm just gonna do a flip through of the cousin. And then we're gonna do some size comparisons and then we're just gonna take a quick peek at some of the subtle differences in the English compared to the Japanese version. So I have my old Avec from, let's see, 2021. So later in the video, we're gonna go over that. So here's the cover. Um, just really plain and simple. Once you open it up, you do get a cover page. Then you have a yearly overview for 2023, an overview for last year, and then an overview for 2024. And the English version, this is really nice because you do have completely everything in English. So you have your months of the year, and then you also have the numbers. Like I said before, this is a Monday start date. So it goes from Monday to Sunday and all of the Sundays are highlighted in red. So that's your yearly overview. Okay, so now we're gonna get in to your vertical monthlies. So you have January through December. Month at the top, you have three different boxes for priorities for each month. Oh. Then you have the uh, days of the month. And once again, the Sundays are notated in red. Um, sorry, that's my daughter in the background. <laughs> and then um, Saturdays are notated in gray. And then you have note spaces on the bottom. And most people use this as a habit tracker. To be honest with you, I've used Hobonichi. I think this is this one will be, gosh, maybe my fourth year now, and I cannot get the hang of this section. Um, if you enjoy tra habit tracking, I think it's a great little area for me. I just, it doesn't work for me no matter what I try. So we'll see how I use it next year. Okay, so the 2023 planner does start in December of 2022. So here is the monthly overview. And at the top, you're gonna have your month and then your days of the week. It also gives you uh, the Japanese characters for the days of the week. And then you have your sidebar. Very small, um, in very small font, you have the current week of the year. So this is December, so you have week 48, 49, 50, 51, and 52. You have a little bit of note-taking space here on the bottom. Saturdays are all notated in gray, and then Sundays are in red. So that's how your monthlies are gonna be set up. The thing that I love about Hobonichi year after year is the consistency, the layout is um, has been the same. So if you like stickers, or if you just want a reliable and consistent layout, you're definitely gonna get that with this planner. Okay, so after the monthlies, um, and this will go until March of 2024. Um, just And as a, a side note, so Hobonichi does make a spring edition of some of their planners that start in April. And from what I have been told, that correlates with their school year. So that's why this planner will go until March of 2024 because the spring edition will start in April. 
Okay, so monthlies, and then we jump into the weeklies. So the weeklies at the top, you get the monthly calendar overview, which I absolutely love. That's one thing I love about Hobonichi planners is you do get that. You get your week. So this is the 52nd week um, of December. And then you jump right in to your time slots. So at the top, you have 5 a.m. And then it goes all the way down to the bottom for 4 a.m. And once again, Saturdays are shaded and Sundays are shaded. Nice sidebar on the side. Um, you don't really have any note space at the bottom, but if you're not planning anything during these hours, you could certainly use that space. Um, I typically do not use the vertical columns um, correlating with the times. I kind of just ignore that. Um, but if that is something that is going to bother you, then that is something that you should know about this planner. So here we are in January of 2023, and it's going to be the same layout. Um, something else you will note is at the top, the shading right here that starts at the top. This is, um, that shading is all of the, it's the entire, like, weekly section let me see if you guys can see it this way so you see that right there so that is if you're flipping quickly or if you want to find something that is going to be the weekly section the plain white in the front is going to be your monthly and then these tab well these different colors right here are going to correlate with your daily pages um for each month so that's Basically, you have like invisible tabs if you don't like tabs sticking out, which I have tried tabs in the past and I just don't like them. So I appreciate that. Okay, so we're going to skip. We're going to get through all of the weeklies. And now we're going to move into our daily pages. Okay, so here we are in January and this is going to be January 1st, 2023. And for every month, you are going to get one blank page and it just has the month on it you can really do whatever you want on this page i usually put in uh, family pictures or just write down like fun memories and then you're going to get a daily page for every single day so at the top you have the month the day and the day of the week and it also gives you your moon cycle and then let's see one two three four five check boxes for priorities up here. You get a very short um, time grid if that's something that you're interested in using. Like I said, I usually just ignore mine. And then there's also a very faint line that's gonna run about three quarters of the way down the page that kind of um, delineates a section here as well as here. The bottom, you're always gonna get a quote and then there is your monthly overview again, which like I've said, I just love about the Hobonichis. So that are, those are the daily pages, the way that they're set up and the color of the tab will kind of coordinate with the font as you can, the font color, as you can tell. So we have January and then you're going to switch over to like this olive green for February. Um, I love the minimal design of this because you can really decorate it as much or as little as you want. So those are the all of the daily pages. Then once you get to the end, we're going to go to December 2023. Seems like such a long ways away. Um, you do get a couple of note pages. Um, you also get some list pages in the back. And I'll show you guys those. timetable, graph paper, favorites, my 100, which I usually use this section for pen mar and marker tests, um, my favorite things, um, some tips about communication, words to remember. Um, I'll probably use this for um, my Spanish. And then this is really cool, the 365 days check off sheet if you have a goal or something that you want to accomplish. Then you also have a gift registry and then enough address spaces for eight people. Personal notes, all of the social information for Hobonichi, as well as your stamp number. And then that's going to wrap up 
this planner. So I will show you um, another thing that I like is that this is all one year. Um, so this is a brand new cousin and then I'll show you my A6 that I'm using this year and I will show you how large mine gets compared to a new one. And this did start off a little bit smaller, but as you can tell, I really um, chunk mine up. And once you get to the end, let's see. So it is September. Um, so as you can tell, this side is really thin. This side is really thick. And when you lay it down, you're gonna get a lump on the side. So what I have been doing, and I do this in my um, Stologies also, is I kind of just find or gather enough bulk in the front to make it equal on both sides. Like kind of eyeball it. And then I just fold my planner in half and then that makes it level again. Um, Cause this is a lay flat, it does have the lay flat binding. Now obviously use this as your own discretion. I don't mind folding mine because if this splits open, um, the spine, that's fine. It doesn't bother me. It never has, um, but that's how I kind of use this all the way to the very end and just make it a little bit easier to write on. So I love that these planners are all in book and I have everything for the year. So now we're just going to look at some size differences. So since this is an A5 planner, um, I wanted to show you the page sizes for a B6 as well as an A6 Stology because I feel like um, those three sizes are the most popular in bound books. So I have, let's see, an A6 page that I tore out. So I just want to show you the differences if you're thinking about switching sizes. Um, so I thought this was a, the best way to do it. So here we have our A5 size page. And for all intents and purposes, we're just going to ignore this bottom section right here because people really don't use that for planning. It's more of like decoration or you just leave it blank. So I'm just going to put this, I'm going to line it up to the bottom. So that's an A6 and then this is an A5. So that will give you kind of like, you know, a, if you're thinking about upsizing or downsizing, um, that kind of gives you an idea of the page differences. Now the next one I'm going to show you is a B6 and this was the most surprising to me because in 2021 I used a B6 for the whole year um, and so I was worried that then an A5 would be too large. Well here's the B6 paper um, and we're really just looking at writing space once again. So I'm gonna line the B6 up to the bottom. And as you can tell, the writing space for the B6 compared to the A5 is nearly identical. You are getting maybe a quarter, half an inch more on the side, if that. Um, but if you don't write all the way out to the edge, I don't think that you um, would actually miss this little section right here. Now, obviously, if you got an A5 Stology, then the whole page uh, would be blank. But I just wanted to show you some comparisons if you were thinking about switching sizes. Now, like I said, in 2021, I used an a B6, and then I wanted to downsize to an A6 to use um, the English version Techo. So what I did was I just took a blank piece of like computer paper or ruled paper and I traced out because I had this. You could also just um, look up online the new size that you're interested in. Draw it out with a ruler on a notebook piece of paper and you can either actually use that or like real time as your planner. Like just try it for a couple of days and see if you can fit everything or you can go back to like the previous week kind of back plan everything into that spacing to find out if this size or maybe this size will work for you. That will kind of save you some money rather than buying all new different sizes of planners when you're not sure which one is going to work. So that's what I did and that's usually what I do and it does work out for me. Um, I did use my older 
um, a vac to kind of um, test and prep to see if I could go from an A6 back up to an A5. Um, I'm running out of space on the monthly and the daily pages in the A6 and I wanted something that was dated which is why I think I will more than likely be using this for 2023. Um, and then the last thing I'm going to do really quickly is just go over the differences in the um, English version compared to the Japanese. So this is the um, AVEC, but it's the only one that I had that wasn't really completely written in. So first thing we're going to look at is our yearly, and you guys will be able to tell the difference between the English and the Japanese if you are kind of on the fence. I know some people are just still going to stick with the Japanese, but um, I went ahead and switched over to English. So here's the original Japanese. As you can tell, pretty much everything on this yearly overview section is Japanese compared to this one. Now we're going to go to the vertical monthlies and you'll be able to quickly tell here as well. So in English, obviously the English month is here and then you have Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all that is in English, whereas here um, it's all just Japanese. And I know people do sell covers like on Etsy if you want to put like a strip of sticker on top of that. Um, I tried that in my weeks and I'm not really, I, I'm not really a big fan of um, a lot of stickers like that. I feel like it kind of just bulks it up. So that is the weekly, excuse me, the uh, vertically month, vertical monthly. All right, now we're going to go to the monthly so you can see the difference there. Okay, English is going to be over here. And let me see if I can get you guys some more light. Okay, so English, you have um, the largest font over here says May. Over here, it's the actual number. Um, the Japanese version, you do still get your English days of the week on the side, and then you also get um, your Japanese. So the monthly really is nearly identical. The only thing that I feel like they've changed is that this small, it used to be a very small month in English and now it's just in the larger space right there. Now we're gonna go into our weekly. And weekly is about the same. So you still have, whoops, you still have your time slots for 5 a.m. to 4 a.m you are still going to get your monthly overviews um, but your days of the week on the monthly overviews are in English in the English version and then the last thing we're going to look at are the daily pages and this is probably where we're going to see the most difference and that is really just because of the quotes at the bottom are now in English so you still have your day your date your day of the week you still have your face uh, moon phase um, you still have your color coding like I said with the month and the only real difference here is gonna be um, the quotes right there at the bottom you're still always gonna get your monthly overview on the bottom right side of the page which is nice and that's obviously the English version it's gonna be in English so um, I think that is going to wrap it up for this video. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. Thank you so much for sticking around and watching another video. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. Please subscribe if you enjoy planner-related content, and I will talk to you guys in my next one. Bye!